Education and democracy go hand in hand. That was the thrust of Bennington College professor Susan Sorbati's keynote speech to the 7th Southern Vermont Educators Symposium held at Maple Street School on Friday, March 17th. Her speech on education for a democracy and how it ties into new theories on individualized learning launched this year's symposium, which was attended by about 50 area educators from many local schools. The theme of the symposium focused on the subject of engaging learners and how to reach them and make accumulating knowledge a priority for all. Sirbati said after her opening address that getting today's students engaged as an informed citizenry and in a democracy was more critical than ever. A challenge that I feel really strongly about is what I said at the beginning, education for a democracy. That I think, you know, the founders of this country really believe that it, that's why they formed, made public education. It was really important that they had an educated citizenry. And I think that we have lost a little bit of that kind of respect for particularly our public education, but the way that we, you know, support teachers, both financially and with the kinds of um, development, you know, professional development. Um, I think it's a really, really important and significant profession that people do not often consider as important as other professions where we kind of raise up celebrities. And so I, and I think that the reason that our democracy may have some real challenges now is maybe because we have fallen down on our educational system. The symposium is a chance for educators to connect and share ideas about what they are doing in their classrooms with an eye towards seeing if some of those approaches would work well in other schools. Following Sir Body's talk, the teachers broke into smaller groups to discuss certain aspects of the points she raised in her speech and reported back to the rest of the attendees. Micah Hare, a middle school math teacher from Dorset, described what his group discussed. The pathways to learning. They kind of almost started to blend together when it came to the challenges. Um, so for the standards and test challenge, we uh, decided that it's it can be tricky to kind of be stuck on this standard, but really trying to get the student buy-in uh, to produce this project that we all kind of come up with. Um, and one of the solutions that we kind of thought about is taking a multitude of standards um, and kind of bring them together and see what we can pull from each standard in order to develop a project that could be useful for the student learning. Um, again, for the behavior issues, classroom management, again, kind of came together. Um, you know, Jonathan was talking about, you know, the whole idea of the first six weeks of school, and I think that's... Afterwards, Hare described what attracted him to attend the conference. Um, and I have a passion for, you know, Genius Hour, and it's something that I've incorporated in my classroom uh, once a week. So I wanted to bring that to light um, at this symposium, but I also wanted to check out some other things like the movement, uh, the movement... Uh, session that we'll be doing as well as um, some of the other project-based learning and engagement. I'm all about engagement so um, knowing that this symposium was about engagement that our keynote speaker would uh, also speak on engagement would kind of brought me here. So. Then the educators broke into small groups to hear more about engaging students. In one session Arlington High School music teacher Daryl Niffen describe project-based learning as one tool to grab the interests of their students and motivate them. Uh, this is Will Stewart, Tim Stewart's son, and um, he never did any instruments before. This was his first year in any music classes, and um, he told Tim to buy him a keyboard, so he has a keyboard now, and um, he's doing project-based learning. A lot of it is composition-based, so he is interested in how do I express myself through music and a lot of it's electronic music so um, he just did a composition based on video games so he picked his favorite video game I think it was Super Mario Brothers and um, like made his own soundtrack to it and like uh... other workshops included work-based learning drumming meditation and mindfulness one of the sessions took place here at the GNAT studios with a session on how to integrate instruction with a TV studio production. Joy Stewart, Maple Street's Dean of Faculty, explained how the symposium came to be and its purpose. 
Vermont used to have a teachers convention that was always hosted in Burlington area and Southern Vermont teachers had time off to attend but because of travel expenses and whatnot um, very few teachers did attend so I wanted to provide an opportunity for these teachers to get together and collaborate and share ideas that is that was happening in their classroom um, and always based around a certain theme so we have we would have a keynote speaker come and talk about um, the theme of the symposium, and then we would invite um, area educators to share what they were doing in their classrooms as well. The main purpose is really just to connect and collaborate. Uh, we spend so much time in our classrooms, in our schools, and there's so much good that's happening around the, the Southern Vermont area that um, we just really needed an opportunity to come together and learn what's happening in other classrooms, and we'd never have that opportunity, so this day is, is for us to do that. For the GNTV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.